Starship's super heavy booster is hotter than ever. SpaceX is moving forward with its major upgrade to the Starship rocket, which involves installing a new hot staging mechanism on Booster 9. As far as we know, after the static fire of what appears to be 29 Raptor engines below Booster 9 earlier this month, SpaceX rolled back the first stage of the next flight test to the production site. Over a span of slightly more than two weeks, Booster 9 underwent a series of minor assessments and necessary repairs, and now it has its own crown. SpaceX has finally stacked the hot stage ring on top of Booster 9. Vented interstage and heat shield installed atop Booster 9. Starship and Super Heavy are being upgraded to use a separation method called hot staging, where Starship's second stage engines will ignite to push the ship away from the booster. The company wrote on August 18th in a post on X.com that shared two photos of the new hardware. Absolutely breathtaking. Taking. I mean, just take a look at the picture. Now look at the people. Only then can we begin to imagine the sheer size of the Starship Super Heavy system. Just wow. A few upgrades on both a new blast shield and external ring reinforced with more stringers and the engine chill pipe extender will make the next launch insanely exciting and will enable ship Raptor ignition earlier. Now the important part. We can probably see a real test of Booster 9 soon with this new upgrade. After moving Booster 10 for the installation of its 33 Raptor 2s, both of its SPMTs were moved out of the Mega Bay. They still remain in the ring yard, so a transport of Booster 9 to the launch site soon is likely. A new intermittent rollout closure has been scheduled for today from 10 to 1300 or 17 to 2000 local time. More importantly, there is a long road closure scheduled from 8 in the morning on Monday, August 21st to 8 in the evening on Wednesday. The company also performed some awesome water deflector tests yesterday. It's a new sequence with more water before the fire. Next week, SpaceX can conduct a second round of spin prime and static fire tests. If the tests proceed as intended, Ship 25 will subsequently be brought back to be stacked onto Booster 9. This stacking will facilitate compatibility assessments with the ship Quick Disconnect, which has been elevated on the tower to accommodate the increased height of the newly installed hot staging ring. Previously, the hot staging ring experienced its structural testing at the Massey's test site. The test article is on the can crusher device which can apply vertical forces onto the ring just as it would experience during flight. For the next flight, this mechanism will allow the second stage to separate from the first stage super heavy rocket booster. Interstage extension for hot gas venting added to enable Starship to turn on its engines while booster engines are still firing. Musk tweeted yesterday? In any case, it's built using components from previously scrapped Super Heavy and Upper Stage Starship rockets. The load head has been designed to divert the second stage's thrust away from the top of the first stage during hot staging. To ensure the success of the hot staging test, SpaceX has cut off the forward dome section of a decommissioned booster and added a vent on top, which will protect the top section of the rocket from damage caused by the thrust of the second stage. The vent ring will be fastened to the top of the Super Heavy booster with stage clamps. In addition to the vent ring, SpaceX will incorporate another ring for structural support. This load head will be joined with the second stage Starship using clamps that may have been tested during an interstage test conducted last year. The ultimate goal of this upgrade is to protect the super heavy booster and ensure a successful stage separation. According to Musk, this move will give the super heavy Starship combo a serious boost in performance. How? Well, it reduces the loss of velocity between shutting down the first stage engines and igniting the upper stage engines. It's all about maximizing that power. Blasting those upper stage engines while the booster is still hanging around can cause some serious trouble. You don't want the top of the booster getting incinerated, do you? Of course not. So they came up with a solution. They're adding some shielding to the top of the super heavy stage along with an extension that has fancy vents. These vents will cleverly direct the exhaust plumes from the upper stage engines away from the lower stage during their fire restart up. In fact, Elon Musk is talking about the benefits of hot staging, and let me tell you, it's a game changer. According to Musk, hot staging gives a solid boost of around 10% in payload to orbit advantage. And that's no mere feat, my friends. Three center raptors of booster will fire at approximately 50% thrust during hot staging, said Musk. It's all about keeping that thrust going, never stopping, and maximizing the performance. But here's another deal. When you're dealing with super hot plasma 
plasma from those upper stage engines, you need a place for it to go. That's where the vents come into play. They're adding an extension to the booster that's practically all vents. Picture this, a vented extension that lets that upper stage plume flow through without blowing everything to smithereens. It's like creating an escape route for all that fiery power. Sounds risky, right? Or maybe it sounds like deja vu. Well, Musk himself thinks it's the riskiest part of the next flight. Hopefully, SpaceX will manage to control this situation. And if history serves us well, this is definitely something SpaceX can do. According to Musk, SpaceX is on track to lift 80% of all mass to orbit this year, with China accounting for 10% and the rest of the world making up the remaining 10. Musk shared this information in response to a user on his social platform, x.com, who pointed out that SpaceX had launched nearly 10 times more mass to orbit than China in the second quarter, while SpaceX sent approximately 214,095 kilograms of spacecraft up mass during that period, China Aerospace Science and Technology Corporation, or CASC, launched 23,069 kilograms. Meanwhile, Russian space agency Roscosmos, according to an infographic shared by the user, only launched 8,100 kilograms. Musk had originally announced the 80% payload goal back in March, stating that as long as there were no significant launch anomalies, SpaceX would achieve this milestone. In an interview with author Ashley Vance in June, Musk emphasized that he focused on improving Starlink and rockets rather than thinking about competition. He stated that if competitors had success, it would be great. SpaceX has been ramping up its launch activity in recent years. In 2020, the company completed 26 launches, which increased to 31 in 2021, and is projected to reach over 90 launches this year. The company's ambition is to continue dominating the space industry by delivering the majority of the world's payload to orbit. In short, SpaceX's efforts are truly commendable. They merit the highest praise for their role in bringing space exploration closer to humanity. As a bit of side news, Russia's Krylo SV reusable space launch vehicle will conduct its first drop tests in September. A representative of TSNII MASH, a subsidiary of Roscosmos State Corporation that runs the program, said, the company displayed the vehicle's mock-up at the Army 2023 Defense Forum in Kubinka, near Moscow. The scaled-down 6-meter-long Krylo SV technology demonstrator will be dropped from a helicopter at an altitude of 3 kilometers to check its ability to glide down and land as an aircraft. To do so, the vehicle is equipped with a folding wing, tail fins, and aircraft landing gear developed with United Aircraft Corporation. It also has small turbojet engines in the nose for steering during descent. A TSN II MASH presentation at Army 2023 showed two engines to be used by the Krylo SV, a 150kg thrust MGT-D150 designed by Simonov Design Bureau and a 55kg thrust R500 by Russia's Reynolds Company. The next trials are planned for 2025 when a prototype is twice as long, when a prototype that is twice as long will be launched to 110 kilometers and fly about 400 kilometers back to the launch site. Due to the soft flight path, the vehicle will not need a heavy heat shield. The Krylo SV folding wing solution is to be offered for the first stage of the future SLK, ultralight class rocket. This two-stage launch vehicle is to be able to deliver 600 kilograms of payload to orbit and is being studied by Krunichev Space Center. And that's all, folks. If you want to support our channel and get access to exclusive content, please consider becoming a patron by clicking the link in the description below. We appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great Space and until next time, keep looking up.